answers you want. But you mustn't look away from the horrors it does offer. Because you cannot overcome suffering if you refuse to look at it. Warning. This episode of Random Game Reviews contains depictions of psychosis and violence that some people might find distressing. Also, at one point, this giant scary hell lady comes lurching out of the darkness and I'm like, Duh! Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to Random Game Reviews. I put every game in the PlayStation Store into a spreadsheet and let my AI pal Woodlebot, who I use as a glorified random number generator, determine which game I will play and review. This time, I have been randomly assigned Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Hellblade puts you in control of Senua, a young Celtic warrior on a mission to hunt and kill Norse gods so she can gain access to Hell in order to rescue the soul of her dead lover. Her journey and its trials will bring her face to face with malevolent beings, incredible challenges, and spectacles both beautiful and horrible. But here's the thing, none of it is real. One thing the developer wants you to know right off the bat is that Senua suffers from psychosis and that Team Ninja have consulted with researchers and people who have experienced psychosis themselves to make sure that they have truthfully reflected the experience. I must admit that I didn't have to look very far to discover my own ignorance of the subject. So we reached out to Paul Fletcher, psychiatrist and professor of health neuroscience at University of Cambridge. Psychosis is a descriptive term and it refers to um, having a loss of contact with objective reality. So it's characterized by uh, two main sets of symptoms. One of them is hallucinations where somebody experiences perceptions when there is no actual objective thing out there to perceive. You're already dead. Who are you? And the other is delusions where somebody comes to very often bizarre, unpleasant, frightening beliefs when there's no good evidence in favor of them. This psychosis manifests itself in several ways that are central to Hellblade, most prevalently through the disembodied voices that Senua hears talking to her constantly throughout the game. Senua is also plagued by visual hallucinations and deep delusions that take the form of pattern seeking amongst objects and shapes, as well as extreme and unshakable beliefs that in no way resemble reality as others would perceive it. I'll dive more into each of these things throughout the review, but it's important to bring up at the beginning, because Senua's mental illness defines the story and game mechanics so deeply that to take the game and Senua's perception at face value would be to lose layers upon layers of meaning that make up the soul of this game. She's getting This is a journey deep into darkness. There will be no more stories after this one. Normally, I don't spend a lot of time talking about sound design in my reviews, but Hellblade demands that I discuss it in depth. Not only because the audio engineering is central to the game, but also, as nonsensical as this might sound, this is the best game I've ever heard. As you boot up Hellblade, it'll be recommended to you that the game is best experienced with headphones for full 3D binaural sound, which is a recording technique that allows sound to mimic placement and distance in three-dimensional space. Or, to put it simply, it makes it sound like you're physically in the game. I've played games with 3D sound before, and it's a nice feature. It's satisfying to hear the crackle of a fire grow in intensity and fade away behind you as you walk past it. It's immersive to hear the wood of an old structure creak all around you. And it's helpful to hear how far away from you whatever the f this awful thing is while you're trying to avoid it. But where the 3D audio really shines is the way it adds proximity and weight to Senua's terrifying internal dialogue. Due to Senua's psychosis, she is constantly accompanied by a cacophony of voices that each carry a different cadence and function. Most of the voices you hear will express her fears and concerns in harsh panicked whispers, stern rebukes, and mocking laughter. The voices chatter at you constantly, and with the 3D audio design seem to be coming from all directions, swirling about or moving from one ear to another like they just danced their way through your skull. 
The effect is impressive, but it's also stressful and disorienting. The voices are an ever-present companion that try to make you feel afraid, to run away, to feel dumb and weak, or sometimes to embolden you or warn you of danger. One early exchange between the voices in particular sent shivers down my spine. You're in danger. Oh. It took me a long time to get used to voices whispering in my ears, and I could only handle it for 30 minutes at a time during my first few sessions. The voices are scary and unnerving and warn you of threats around every corner that often aren't actually there. But it's not like you can turn the volume down because you will come to rely on these voices. There's no heads up display in Hellblade, so often the only way to know you're going in the right direction is that the voices tell you so. There are other voices in there too though, such as Druth, whose stories of Norse gods reverberate in your mind, and the voice that acts as the narrator who tells you of Senua's tragic past. Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares? Maybe that's why people feared seeing the world through her eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept yours might be too. And there are other darker voices. Anyone? There is no one here but me. Not you. Did you think that I would let you go? That you lost me back in the wilds? Hellblade integrates sound into the gameplay in such an organic and impressive way, using audio to compel me forward not only because I'm being literally urged to do so by the voices, but also because I found the longer I stood still, the more oppressive I noticed the soundscape to be. A swirling mix of sounds both real and imagined, familiar and terrifying. Hellblade was released in 2017, and by the standards of the time, the game delivers really impressive graphics, especially considering it was developed by a pretty small team. Six years on, it does show its age a little bit, except for face capture for Senua, which would still be considered high-end graphics today. And any lack of triumphant graphical fidelity is compensated for by lighting and the phenomenal visual hallucinations that persist through the entire playthrough. My one complaint is that many of the environments are muddled in browns and greys, which can make it hard to see where to go. On three separate occasions, I wasted half an hour running around an area because I couldn't just see the ladder I needed to go up. Can't we have a more vibrant journey into the depths of a woman's anguish and mental illness? Though Ninja Theory made a couple of really smart visual decisions that contribute to the mood and intensity of the game, such as splicing in live action performance into Senua's hallucinations, using visual distortion to make environments more hostile, and attaching the third person camera to Senua's hip. The camera placement will seem a bit off from most third person games because it puts you in a position where it feels like you're watching directly over Senua's shoulder. The camera also sways with her movements, creating a rough, jarring feeling where most modern game design attempts to be smooth and seamless. The fact that such a core element of the game design also serves to make you feel uncomfortable is brilliant and heightens the sense of unease I felt, particularly during combat. Combat is actually one of the simpler gameplay elements in Hellblade. Your options during combat are limited to light attack, heavy attack, melee attack, run, block, and evade. It's straightforward enough that the game doesn't bother giving you a tutorial for it. Though the system is deep enough that there are some pretty good combos that you'll figure out through experimentation. Before playing, I assumed Hellblade would be pretty combat heavy, but fights are only a sometimes thing. I wouldn't say combat is even very hard, but it's a lot of other things. Intense, aggressive, visceral, rapid, violent. It felt to me like combat wasn't there so much to test your skills as it was to provide a sense of panic and discomfort. Senua fights with such a ferocity that I found my body would clench up with every fight, like I was channeling her fury and desperation. The voices Senua hallucinates come to her aid to warn you when you're about to be attacked so you can parry or get out of the way, which is a great mechanic. There wasn't much in the way of progression in combat or even difficulty scaling. The only way fights get harder is when you have more enemies to contend with at once. You'll be given a special ability to slow time and beat up on dudes, but aside from that nice bonus, fights are pretty samey. 
Even the boss fights aren't that difficult, but they serve as really cool set pieces to cap off each section. And you always have the option to turn up the difficulty if you're a Soulsborne enthusiast who has something to prove. When not fighting for your life against imaginary brutes, you'll be spending most of your time exploring the landscape. This game is as much a journey inward as it is a journey with a destination, and so much of that story plays out as you walk from place to place or talk to this face in the side of the mountain. It's it's your mom. But invariably, you'll be faced with a big old door that you can't open, and that means it's puzzle time. Each of these special puzzle doors will present you with one or more runes that you must find in the environment. For instance, this puzzle is brought to you by the letter Manaz. In order to bring these shapes into focus, you'll have to explore the area and shift your perspective. On the whole, puzzles in Hellblade are fairly enjoyable to navigate. Until they aren't. This is where landscape traversal can become an issue again. The game sometimes fails to create clear landmarks, so getting turned around or not knowing where to go can be a real hindrance to the process. But respectively, the whole exercise is a representation of a well-documented psychosis condition where patients seek meaning in random shapes, numbers, or words. But it's also a constant invitation to the players to try to see things in a new way, as Senua does. This is reflected in the portal puzzles where you change the physical landscape by looking through arches while hunting the trickster god Valraven, and many other of the game's unique puzzles. Except, of course, for the puzzles where you just have to run the correct way through a bunch of fire while people scream all around you, which was just friggin' grim and alarming. But grim and alarming is the vibe in this game, and things only get more intense the further you go. The beast is stalking you from the shadows. Your sword is useless here. I will let you know as a courtesy that this game does not do jump scares, which is actually kind of sweet, considering it's pretty goddamn stressful by its own merits. Senua is stuck in the darkness of her mind trying to find the light, and that's a dogged fight from start to finish, with darkness even being THE enemy at play in one of the game's most stressful segments. Hellblade is this big swirling juxtaposition that will sometimes give you a moment of beauty, but then invariably dashes it with abject horror. I remember the first time I found somewhere nice and idyllic, the first direction one of the voices gave me to progress was to just follow the sound of screaming, so you, you rarely get a break. There's a true visceral violence here that can be hard to witness, especially as it plays against Senua's grief and trauma. A rot grows up Senua's arm to portray her descent into her own darkness, corpses dot the landscape, dangle from the ceiling or reach for you greedily. Every enemy towers menacingly over you, and at one point you have to deal with these horrible undulating beasts just traipsing about like a Dr. Seuss acid nightmare. I want to be clear that this game is pretty mentally punishing to play. I think a lot of tough guys on the internet who are into things that are hardcore scary and gory would probably call me a baby or whatever, but if you're a person that possesses enough human empathy that someone would let you look after their child, then this game will probably weigh on you a bit. But if you can handle it, it's worth it, because I've never seen a story quite like this one. Hellblade takes something stigmatic like psychosis and uses it to elevate a narrative in beautiful ways. It takes an internal story of grief, loss, and revenge and externalizes it into an impossibly fantastic, if terrifying world where you fight on through impossible odds where it's impossible to even tell what's real, and romanticizes revenge while showing its sickening cost at every turn. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Broken. <laughs> And lost. Just Do like it. your sword. Come on. There. <laughs> it makes you think about how mental illness would take on a different context in prehistory, as those who see things differently can be elevated as seers, or more likely shunned and exiled, allowing the symptoms of the illness to be exacerbated by isolation and mistreatment like we too often do with our mentally ill today. But perhaps most impressively, it defies expectations by not being a story that gets bigger and more sprawling the further you go. It's a story that feels insurmountably big, but gets smaller and simpler with each new thing that pulls into focus, as you peel back the layers of Senua's psyche and learn what happened to her, as well as who loved her and who hurt her. 
All of it hits so hard because of an unforgettable performance by Melina Jurgens, who portrays so many facets of Senua, a bewildered, emaciated young woman with a ferocity that is impossible to look away from. I've never seen a role that asks for literally every human emotion that exists, and the raw, palpable intensity with which Melina performed it all earned her a BAFTA award in what I must assume was the, uh, yeah, obviously this person gets an award, f***ing no-brainer category. So while so much about this game was difficult, it was one I couldn't stay away from for long and felt genuinely lucky to play. If you feel like this is one you could go for, you'll be treated to a very unique adventure where you never know what you'll see around the corner. Duh! It's time to answer the question, would I play this game if I were not destined to do so? For Hellblade Senua Sacrifice, the answer is yes. Definitely a time. I'll get it out of the way that this is not a flawless game. The pacing and challenge level can be uneven and it's not super hard to get lost, sidetracked, or confused. But it's worth the price of admission for the sound design alone. Get some headphones on your dome and let a whole bunch of disembodied voices make you feel weird for several hours. You do get used to them. On top of that, the gameplay, fighting, and visual effects are all really good, often bordering on great. You'll see and do some really unique stuff in Hellblade that's worth experiencing, and the story and performances are absolutely top-notch. I couldn't stop thinking about Senua for days, and I hope you have a similar experience if you give it a try. That does it for this episode. Whew, that one was a doozy for a lot of reasons. Maybe Woodlebot will give me something cute as a palette cleanser next time. Until then, make sure you hallucinate all your runes before you run through any screamy fire. And I'll see you all soon on Random Game Reviews. Woodlebot, would you battle Norse gods to rescue my soul from hell? Oh my leaf, that sounds like a dangerous task. But I'm always up for an adventure, though I might need some help from my friends to take on such a mighty challenge. Let's make a plan!